on during the pandemic. This is a song, uh, a riff on a, a poem. It's one of the most. Um, oh yeah, it's a flute song. This is yeah, flute song. Flute song. Um, it's a it's a poem uh, by a man called Rue de Boeuf, who uh, is is really one of the first uh, poets to have written like that. You uh, in French poetry, um, it's one of the oldest extant documents of. French poetry, so it's a super old poem, uh, the first written poem in the French language, and it was written during the plague. So, and judging by his name, he was involved in the beef industry in some way, because he just has one word. You know, so that's how old this guy is. He's like, we're in, we only have one name in Europe, like Rue de Boeuf, you know, knew who that was. Um, so you probably like, you know, got leather from him by day, and then he wrote poetry at night. True Ren Fair guy. Um, anyway. Um, Lamb, or no, not lamb chops. He wrote <laughs> steak, leather shoes, and poetry. Yes, um, and he wrote, he said, where have all my friends gone? And it was a reflection of losing a lot of friends during the Black Plague. Oh. And it's like, oh, what an inspirational poem. <laughs> um, <laughs> only during a pandemic would that really get you. Although even prior to the pandemic, I did make an album dedicated to Catholic nuns in Southern Belgium who marketed basically opium uh, as a medicine. So anyway, that's me. Hey, here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
We're going to go to Belgium. It's like going to church when you're at a Hell and Jelly show. Um, I, I, am a, I am a Belgian-American, but I was raised in Singapore for nine years, and as a child, so um, my whole childhood was you know, in Southeast Asia, which is beautiful, beautiful place to be raised, and uh, lots of really great food. Um, I was a growing girl, as I said earlier, I grew really quickly, so I mean, Singapore food did it, who knows, who knows? Um, so yeah, I, uh, I'm so excited not to be in my car right now, and um, I've, been, I've been on tour and driving a lot, and it's been beautiful, um, but I, I was saying that I am originally from Belgium, and I'm from the French-speaking part of Belgium. So this is the first song I learned to sing and play at the same time. I was classically trained and I got into jazz, as I mentioned. And then I was, after Katrina, I 
it's a long story, but I ended up living in the short bus outside of Houston, Texas, working henna tattoos at a Ren fair. <laughs> Whoa! Well, I did not know that about you. It was, it was good cash money on the weekends, and then I could go clean up my apartment in New Orleans. It was completely fucked. Um, so I tried to save these, like, these boots I had. Everything else I was fine with, but there was this one pair of boots. And they were like, clean everything in Lysol, and then we'll be better. And I was young and foolish. Um, and I lost the boots. Anyway, there was other things more important than my boots. Um, but I did learn how to sing and play, stuck in the woods of Texas. What else are you going to do? I mean, the henna tattoos are fun and all, but they only go so far. And they wear away and all that. Yeah, they're only like a few weeks and then they're gone. Um, but this has lasted a lifetime, so here we go. This is uh, Judo's Uh This is a song called La, uh, Mon Petit Royaume, which is My Little Kingdom. And he, uh, Judos is a beautiful person. He's a poet, a humanist, musician, um, gardener, collector. And I basically traded this song for a ukulele, actually. Nice. He didn't have one. He had a lot of instruments, but he was like, what is a ukulele? And I'm like, ooh, I know what I'm getting you for your birthday. <laughs> and then he was like, well, you can record my music, if any of it, wow. really. So I'll make a whole album one day, but in the meantime, I. I sprinkle his songs throughout my music, but um, this is the first song I learned to sing and play, and I had to put it in 3-4, because it was easier for me to play a 3-4 pattern and sing when I first started. Um, and uh, so I'd like to keep it there, at least to start. Oh, in was it in original? It's in 4, I mean oh. in 4-4, four, four, yeah. But it was a very folky folk form, like a very nebulous. But I couldn't do it, I just couldn't do it. I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I just feel like one, two, and then three is the breath. Like, then you can sing, you know? Yes. One, two, or four is like very, like, oh. <laughs> like, where do you take a breath? Like, I don't know how to sing. I play cello. Anyway. Okay. Um, still not super happy with my vocal, but oh well. It sounds okay? All right, better. Oh, good, good. Okay. Great. I haven't had the, I thought I would go on tour up here and, and end up playing a, lo a lot of outdoor shows with cicadas flying in my mouth. <laughs> Big letdown. No cicadas, not one. But I did meet a yak in Vermont, so that, that, that compensated a lot. Yep. I thought a lot of people could say that, but maybe not. Yaks are not, I've a lot of llamas, not native, not I don't think. Yaks. A beautiful yak. He was he was old actually. He was really old, you know. He and he was like losing his fur, so I like or his whatever hair hair for real. And it's soft, and you can make like really beautiful things out of it apparently. But um, these were too wild, and they had it because the, the guy that owns it's like the head of Cox Communication. I'm totally busting him right now, but he's, he's like a billionaire, and he uh, has a giant farm in Vermont. And I knew I got to befriend. Why am I telling you this story? I don't know. I'm big fan. Um, I befriended the caretakers, and I got to meet the yaks. And uh, but they're they're very wild. We brought them over from Denver. They're eight like Asian yaks, um, and uh, they but they never come up and say hi to anybody. And I just arrived, and the oldest yak just came up to me and started breathing on me. I swear it was like. <laughs> it was just like oh my god. My friend came over and he's like, that's never happened. None of us have gotten that close to this yak. And I'm like, well, <laughs> is it the Belgian thing? So, it's a Belgian segue. Tie it back in. All right, here we are. Well done. <laughs> Notre histoire paraît dérisoire dans le temps qui fuit. Même si elle est vaine, cette douce humaine, envers quoi et vers qui le petit royaume sans majordome s'échine. Jade de la traire, viens si vente à Jennifer Scatti 
Ne crains pas la pire de canard ta bière, ma Sophie. Au petit royaume, sans majordome, c'est chez lui.
apparently, I've heard. So you can no, sit against me. <laughs> um, all right. Should I go away? I think you should go away, though. Megan, thank you. Should I make a reservation to come back? Yeah. <laughs> You're here for the night. Don't all go right. too far. What's really funny is that it turned out that where Helen is staying is like only six blocks from me, which is... Well, you know, when you think about When you go to New York, or, you know, area, <laughs> doesn't always happen that way. Doesn't always happen. Um, very, very happy that Jessica was able to come in and sit in. Thank you. in a PJ Harvey cover. That's your one. So that's what's happening right now. I got to see her in Luxembourg. Which is a pretty pretty awesome place to see her. Um, the big stone wall behind her. Angelique, breathes makes you ever see. 